to have some fun with the brewery in the beer shed today. G'day guys, Chris here. How you going? You know, of late I've been making a lot of brewery pads and I've been absolutely loving it. Just quietly, the Hopper Sonic is probably my favourite. But today it's all about making my own beer. You know, that's the thing I love about brewery. You can make the old brew pads like the Dark Monk here whenever you like, but it also allows you to experiment in a really nicely controlled environment. The results have been fantastic. I've absolutely loved the beers I've produced and just quietly so have a lot of my friends and family. But what I really got the brew for was to allow me to really control some more elements of the brew, like the temperature and all that sort of thing, which I couldn't really do with my old kit, and then explore some more advanced elements of brewing and really understand the formulation of recipes. You know, smash beers are a pretty cool way of making uh, pretty simple recipes. Smash stands for single malt and single hop. So you basically just grab a malt, something pretty simple like a traditional two row pale malt, and then you pick a hop and you use that to cover off on your bitterness, your aromas, and your flavors. You know, it sounds like there's not a lot of freedom to experiment here, which is kind of right, but really smash beers are more about mucking around with the hops to find out what happens when you do them with different amounts, different timings, and then combine them with other different yeasts and other mashing methods to see what sort of results you get as far as aromas and flavors within the beer. You know, when a brewer gets a new hop to experiment with, he'll often make a smash beer just to see, you know, how it's going to work and then he'll tweak that recipe to eventually become a final beer that goes out to consumers. This is the third smash beer I've made in my brewery, so I'm really starting to get the hang of it. But I've also had some great advice from some other brewers out there in the brewing network that have told me how to make my smash beers even better. So here I am, passing on to you my three best tips for making smash beers. You know, it's important that you select a pretty all-round type of hop for doing smash beers. You know, some hops are better for using uh, for bitterness and others are better for using for aroma. And vice versa, I suppose. You know, what I chose today was the Enigma hop because I had enough of it in the freezer to allow me to put some good dosages of hops into the beer, but then also have enough left over to do some really cool dry hopping with it as well. If you're gonna pick a hop, pick an all-rounder like something like a Mosaic, a Centennial, a Citra, or maybe a Cascade. Keep it pretty simple here, I reckon just go with the traditional two-row pale malt, but the other options might be Pilsner, Marisota or Vienna. You're not going to make a smash beer with anything like a dark roasted malt, or maybe some crystal, or even a roast barley. You know, the idea with the smash beers is really all about showcasing the hops within the beer. So if you're going to pick a yeast, pick something pretty simple and clean. I like to use the US05, but don't worry about me. Do whatever you want. You can pick a Saison yeast or a Champagne yeast or maybe even an English ale. Experiment, have a crack and see what kind of results you get. So what did I choose for making my smash beer? Here's my recipe on the screen. You can see it's two row power malt with Enigma hops at the start and the end of the boil and then it flame out. I'll ferment with US05 yeast and I'm aiming for a 4.5% sessionable beer. So the beer looks awesome, and we hit our OG of 1.046, so pretty happy with that. We'll drain off now, put it in the temp-controlled fermenter, and in a few weeks we'll taste it. I cannot wait. Smash beers, how good are they? <laughs> 